At the end of this tutorial, you'll know exactly how to create stunning waterfalls in free open source software, Blender. I'll be going through three example scenes and breaking down how you can quickly add these waterfalls to your projects. If you want to follow along exactly, feel free to download the blend files in the description. Scene 1. This is the easiest method, which is just a plane with a video texture on it. Doing it this way, you don't have to worry about creating the splash at the bottom of the waterfall or the top, just the texture itself. Now how do you get these textures? Surprisingly, it was quite a hassle to find any ready to use waterfall videos online without having to pay, so I decided to make them myself. I went to different free stock footage websites and downloaded waterfall videos that had no moving camera in it so it was easy in the editing process later. Also try to find videos that have white waterfalls. The more white mist and distinct the waterfall is, the easier it is to mask it out later. I brought these videos into DaVinci Resolve, the free editing software I use. And by going into the color tab, I can use a curve tool in the window section and create a rough outline around the waterfall, making sure I don't cut off any parts where the water sprays outward. You want to get all that juicy detail. Unfortunately, this video is a tad overexposed, so the bright sections of the waterfall have lost detail. Make sure to right click in your note editor and select add alpha output, and drag the blue square to the blue circle. Nice! Now that you have the waterfall cut out to just the water parts, you can take out that nasty background behind it by using our curves and removing everywhere that isn't white by dragging our shadows closer to our highlights, until you can see only the water. If you notice a loss of detail in the darker parts of your waterfall, you can drag up the mid-tones by clicking in the middle and adding a new point in the middle and bringing it up, making sure not to bring it up too much, losing detail. Once you're all finished, you can scale up your video to fill the frame, then go into our delivery tab to export the video. I always use MP4, but you can use whatever you feel best. With the Blender project open, you will go into our preferences by going Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search for Images. Check the add-on for importing images as planes, so now you can add in our waterfall video as an object to our scene with all the UVs ready to go. Press Shift A, then go to Images and Images as Planes and locate wherever you saved your waterfall video and double click on it to bring it in. Let's scale it up so it doesn't look like tap water. Click on our object and add an edge loop on both sides of our waterfall so you have a smaller plane to work with. Go into the shading tab and make sure the color is going into the alpha. If you want to improve the mass for your water, you can add a color ramp in between and adjust the fall off. Oh, and don't forget to go into your material tab on the right and scroll to the bottom until you see settings. And just make sure that the blend mode is set to alpha hashed. This allows Blender to use the alpha channel for that material so your waterfall doesn't look like this. All you ought to do now is make a cave, put a waterfall outside of it, and then shine a light through the water. This next scene is one made from a cliff in a forest. By the way, if you want a tutorial on how I made all the foliage and environment in this scene, comment down below. This method is the same as example one, except for the pond under the waterfall. So I'm going to go through the first part a bit quicker. Find a video, cut it out in DaVinci Resolve, right click in your note editor, add an alpha output, connect the alpha channels together, bring your shadows closer to the highlights, and raise the midtones. Export the video as an MP4, bring in the blender using the images as planes add-on, and cut out the waterfall with edge loops, and set the blend mode to alpha hash and material settings. Now, you can continue. I already have my cliff set up here, so you're just going to bring our plane up to it, and create a curve in the plane using edge loops to imitate the velocity of this water falling from the top of the mini cliff. I use proportional editing for this, changing my curve type to sharp. Just make sure the camera in your scene is facing towards the waterfall. Doesn't have to be exact, you have surprisingly quite a bit of wiggle room. But if you have the camera to the side of your waterfall, you'll be able to tell it's just a flat plane quite quickly, ruining the illusion. Now let's make that texture for the pond below. The water shader is a pretty simple setup with just a dark blue plane and noise texture going into the normal to create the bumps you see in real water. Starting with adding a plane and creating a new texture, instead of going into the shader tab, I like to drag up my timeline and turn that into the shader editor so you don't have to switch between tabs, slowing down the viewport. Now let's add a noise texture to create those waves. Make sure you got the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Just go to your add-ons, preferences, and search Wrangler. Now you can press Ctrl T on our noise texture to automatically create texture coordinates and mapping nodes. Let's set our noise texture to 4D so we have access to the extra variable W, which controls, well, I'm not exactly sure, but you're going to use it to simulate waves over time. You can see what your noise texture is doing pressing Ctrl Shift and clicking on your noise texture node. To see what it's creating better, let's add a color ramp in between. Let's bring the scale and detail up on our noise texture, along with a little bit of roughness to add a little more waves. It still doesn't look like waves though, so let's bump up the lacunarity, lacunarity, lacu, lacunarity, lacunarity, and teensy bit of the distortion. Here are my exact settings, but you can just play around with it until it looks right. If you want bigger waves, decrease the scale, and if you want smaller waves, increase the scale and the roughness. Now plug this color ramp into a bump node, going into the normal. 
Oh, and turn the strength down quite a bit. If you want some physical bump in the geometry and not just a normal texture, then duplicate your noise texture and your color ramp and plug that into the displacement node. Also turn the value up on the black area of the color ramp to decrease the strength. I turn the scale down to 0.06 and the MIDI volt to 0.38, which is what I found best to work for my scene. Now this is the cool part. We're going to animate the waves into a certain direction almost like the waterfall is pushing the water outwards. To do this we're going to add a value node and plug it into our location in our mapping node. Let's create a keyframe at the start of our animation. By the way, you can use the shortcut shift back arrow to go to the starting frame, and shift backward arrow to go to the last frame. At the end of our animation, set the value to something around 1. This varies depending on the length of your animation. The higher the value at the end, the faster your pond will move. Now if you press play, you can see the water moving, but not in the right direction. That is because we plugged this value node into all three of our directions. So Blender is trying to move all the locations at the same time. My waterfall is facing towards the x-axis. You can see this by looking at which line on the grid it is facing. To exclude only the x-axis, we're going to plug this value node into the x-value of a combined xyz, and then plug that into the location. Now we'll only move along the x-axis. If it's moving the opposite direction, then you go to your last frame and make the number a negative number by adding a dash before it, and then press I to insert the keyframe. And that's it! Scene 3. The last scene. This one was definitely the most fun to do, and you might learn some techniques that you will use for many projects in the future. You're going to start with the plane in the shape of our waterfall. You can make it taller by pressing S to scale, and then Z to only scale on the Z axis. Then you're going to create a shader. Let's start with the noise texture going into the color ramp. But unlike in example 2, we're going to stretch out this texture to make it look like running water. By pressing Ctrl T on our noise texture, you can stretch out the scale on the Z axis by decreasing the value. I use 0.1. Also, increasing the x-axis to squish the texture together to appear as if there's more detail in the water. Increase that scale up to something around 10 and bring that detail up to 15. Now for the cool part. By running our color into a separate color node, you can switch the mode to hue, saturation, and value, and through the hue, you can see how it creates some areas with sharp edges and others with smooth edges, emulating water more accurately. Now for the color of our water, you can change the white on this color ramp to a light blue. Now plug that into our base color looks weird though, and that's because you want this black area to be transparent. So let's duplicate our color ramp and plug the hue into it with the color ramp leading into the alpha. Brighten the black on this color ramp so no part is 100% transparent. Right now you can see big gaps in our waterfall where water should be, so let's add some more detail in those empty spots. Duplicate your color ramp and noise texture and set this noise texture to constant. Now you can increase the scale of our noise texture a bunch, somewhere around 50, to make sure we don't have any empty spots and duplicate the new mapping node setting this one Z scale all the way down to 0.01 and the X down slightly. After your first color ramp, add a mix color and set the mix mode to at, having the factor set to 1 so you can connect both of your color ramps together and see what it does. Before, after, before, after. You can see it take that subtle effect in the black areas. Our waterfall still looks a bit bland though, so let's add some intensity to it by making some parts of it glow. Having our waterfall be visible even in dark scenes while still looking natural. Let's create a new color ramp and plug the color ramp from our first noise texture into it, and mix that with another mix color and use the top color ramp to add detail in the black areas. Plug that into the color of your mission and bring that strength up to 20. Play around with it if it's too bright. Now there's still one issue. The edges of our waterfall are way too harsh, making it clearly a flat plane. Not cool. Oh, and don't forget to go into your material tab on the right and scroll to the bottom until you see settings, and just make sure that the blend mode is set to alpha hashed. We can easily fade these edges out though. Create a texture coordinate and plug the generated coordinate into our separate XYZ node. By pressing Ctrl Shift click on our separate XYZ node, we can see how it creates a gradient on the edge of our waterfall. If it's the wrong way, hold down Ctrl and Shift and click on it until it's on the right axis. We're going to use this gradient to make this black edge transparent. You probably want both sides faded though, so duplicate the node and bring it into a color ramp so we can invert it. Now using a math node set to multiply, we can add both of these together. Now add a mix shader and combine your BSDF node with this color ramp as the factor, having the bottom shader be a transparent shader. You probably won't see any difference though because we have to invert this with a color ramp. So duplicate it and invert the order. Make sure our mix shader is connected to your material output and adjust the black until you get that fall off that you want. If you're curious how I make the environments like the ones you saw in this video, I use a simple trick in the forest scene that can transform all your future Blender projects. Click here to see how I did it.